Y'all, I am so excited about today's announcement. One of the most common questions that I see from advisors is how do I create professional looking layouts and how do I teach my students how to do that? Unfortunately, the answer is always a little complicated because there's so much that goes into a really good spread. First, you have the content, figuring out what the story is, how you're going to tell it verbally and visually. Then you have the basic layout. What is the content that you need to have on the page? What's your, gonna be your dominant element? Are you going to have a story? Are you gonna have alternative coverage? Are you using modules? And then you have the visual design. What are your fonts? What are your colors? What are your design elements that you use to help tell the story of your theme throughout the whole book and make it look consistent? There's a lot of things that go into creating professional looking layouts. And one of them is the software that you use to create it. So I am not into wasting anybody's time. So I want to make sure if you're interested in this course, you know exactly what you're signing up for and what you're getting into and if it's right for you or not. So this course is probably not the right fit for you if you are a brand new advisor, whether you're a first year teacher ever, never been in a classroom before and this is your first year, or you have a different background such as English or art or math or science or history. If you're a brand new advisor and this is your first year doing student publications, just worry about getting that publication out and done. If you're working with a publisher that offers software, there are a lot of things you can do in that software that you can do in InDesign. I don't necessarily think that every advisor needs to be using InDesign. I don't think it's the best fit for every program, every yearbook. It just depends on the program itself and programs are as different as yearbooks are. There's just so many different ways to structure it and it's not the right fit for everybody. Especially if you have no graphic design experience and you're just getting started, the publisher that you're using, if they have a software, they have templates and fonts and color guides that they will help guide you through the process. And yes, you might be more limited, but it's going to be helpful, especially in the beginning. So I would worry about just getting that book finished, getting that school newspaper out, especially if your publisher lets you use that software also for your newspaper. But if you're just getting started, don't worry about building on new skills, learn the basics first, and then you can add on by using InDesign later if you still want to. Secondly is if you have no access to InDesign. So there is a educational license that you have to purchase, but a lot of times schools have purchased license already, either through their CTE department or through their photography department, or the district itself might have an agreement with Adobe. So you might need to ask around, but if you don't have access to InDesign already, and then your publisher includes software, then that's gonna be a money saver. And in that case, I would say, let's use your publisher software and see how you like it. And then if you still want to move on to InDesign, you can budget for it in the future. And the last point related to accessing InDesign is if you do have a limited budget, you know, you might need to kind of plan for how to use InDesign in the future. So you might need to save up some money in your activity account if you want to purchase it, if you don't already have access. Um, but that limited budget can be a hindrance. And if your publisher already offers software that's included in the publishing contract, then go ahead and use that. See how you like it. Learn the basics of design, of content creation, of layouts, and then you can work your way up to InDesign in the future if you're still interested. A lot of times the publisher softwares mimic InDesign in a lot of ways, and so it'll be a lot easier to transition into InDesign once you've learned their software. But if you have a limited budget, maybe learn the basics with the publisher software and then work your way up. Also, if you have limited time, if you are an advisor that is just already super overwhelmed and you are trying to manage five of their preps and get these publications out, really evaluate, do you have the time to learn a new software? Yes, you only have to learn it once, but it is a learning curve that if you already know your publisher software really well, then maybe you don't have the time to take on learning a new skill and that's okay. And the last is if you have limited patience, and I say that kind of in a, as a joke, but I mean it absolutely seriously. I mean, teachers these days are stretched thinner than ever before. You're being asked to do more than ever before for less money than ever before. And it's just, it's really hard these days to be a teacher. I think that it can be really helpful for the right program, the right teacher, the right yearbook, but I wanna make sure that that's very clear, that you can make an award-winning yearbook, a beautiful yearbook, a journalistically sound yearbook, a yearbook that your community loves without InDesign. It's more important that you and your students learn the basics of creating content and really master that. The software is secondary. Now, that said, this course is probably perfect for you if you want to teach your students industry standard software. Adobe InDesign is the gold standard for any printed materials. So things that you see printed in magazines, in books, billboards, college brochures, menus, more than likely they were created using Adobe InDesign. 
So what that means is that you are teaching them marketable skills that they can use in the real world and leverage and make money with. So it's really important that we are teaching our students not just how to create a yearbook, but they're learning how to get a job someday. And so that might be in graphic design, that might be in photography, it might be in writing, it might be in journalism. There's so many subjects that a student in journalism can go into professionally, and this is just one more skill that they can use along the way. Having knowledge or experience using InDesign can really give them an edge above their classmates in college or their competitors in the workforce. For instance, when I was 16, I was on the yearbook staff and I had been working in InDesign and I actually got a job at a print shop as a graphic artist and I was just doing little stuff like changing names on business cards or swapping colors out but I got experience in the real world getting paid to do it because of my experience in yearbook and that's just such a useful skill so later on when they go to college you know your students are up against other graphic design students but if they have already been using industry standard software then they have an edge above the others. Secondly, when you use InDesign, you have no limits whatsoever. Like I said, professional graphic designers are using Adobe InDesign to create everything you see on the shelves. So while that sounds like a good thing, it can also be a bad thing if you don't learn how to use the software properly and your students aren't operating within a system that you create to make sure that your files are print ready. So for instance, publisher software typically limits your margins. They make sure that you have things at the right proper resolution. They make sure that images are uploaded in the right place. With InDesign, you're in charge of all of that. And while that's a good thing that you don't have limits design-wise, feature-wise, function-wise, font-wise, whatever, there are other things that publisher software kind of puts guardrails around you and you know you have to kind of put those guardrails around yourself. And then one other big reason why you might want to consider using InDesign is that if you were to switch publishers, there is no learning curve. Every publisher will be able to support you creating your yearbook using InDesign. And so once you've taught yourself and you've taught your students how to use it and from year, year after year, you get better and better and better and your students are more knowledgeable. If you were to switch publishers down the line, you don't have to learn anything new. You can keep all your same software. You can access all of your old documents. You have complete control over everything regardless of who you publish with. A lot of times, one big reason why people don't want to switch publishers or don't even look outside their current publisher is because they're scared of changing software and having to learn something new. Totally, totally understand that. But I personally would rather learn one thing one time and it doesn't matter who I publish with versus being tied to a particular publisher because of their software. So let's talk about the actual content in the course. The course consists of 12 modules. So the first one is why use InDesign. I just gave you a couple of reasons, but we go way more into depth about why you would use it in your classroom, why I think it's a really good option for some programs. We talk about how InDesign works and how it's different than other programs. Then we talk about the user interface, where you can find everything, where you're gonna to go to make edits that you need. Then we talk about setting up your publication. So this is going to be all the options that you have within InDesign for your margins, your page size, your number of pages, your publication folders, all of that. So then we have module five and module six, which kind of go together because these are the main things that you're going to be doing in InDesign. So it's images and type. So once you have like your content that you have going for your spread, you're going to go and place those images onto the layout and then you're going to add the type for the captions, the stories, all of the elements around the images. Then we have your design elements. So notice you have your content first and then you have your design second because that is how your students should be designing their layouts as well. Module eight is alignment tools. I'm a sucker for alignment. I will zoom in as far as you possibly can to make sure things are aligned. And so we're going to talk about the grids, the guides, and snapping to the grid and making sure everything is perfectly aligned. Module nine is utilizing styles. So this is one of the best features in my opinion in InDesign is you can create what are called styles for your text and your objects. And so this ensures that throughout the whole publication you are super consistent. So you don't have to have your students individually changing the fonts, the sizes, the strokes, the drop shadows. It is the same style throughout the whole book, which is so helpful. And we also go over utilizing Creative Cloud Libraries, which you can create entire modules that drag and drop into your spread. Super helpful for creating consistent layouts. Module 10 is creating templates. So it's using those styles, using those modules, the libraries, creating your templates, and then flipping them. So you have a really consistent look throughout your whole book. Then creating an index. One of the dreaded parts of creating a yearbook is creating an index. InDesign does have a built-in indexing feature, and so how to create that, how to edit it, how to format it, and how to run that. 
Then the last module is preparing your pages to print. So pre-flighting them before they go to the printer, making sure you don't have any missing links, overset text. Those are probably terms that if you've never used in design, you probably don't recognize, but if you have, you probably definitely recognize. And so we talk about how to fix those and how to prevent them and how to make sure that all your pages and your content are ready to send to your printer. So then we have four bonus modules. So the first one is design trends. We're going to look at current mainstream graphic design industry examples as well as student publication examples and look at what is trending in graphic design right now and look at how we would create that in InDesign. Then we take that one step further in bonus module number two and we're going to actually create one of those inspiration pieces in InDesign and show how it can be translated to a student publication. So we're not gonna create it straight from what it is because that would be plagiarizing, but we're gonna look at how to take a piece of inspiration and create it into a student publication layout that you could use. Then in module three, we're gonna talk about tables. InDesign's tables feature is really, really useful for any sort of organizing data, but there's also a lot of other ways that you can use it to organize your content on your spread. And then lastly, one of probably the most asked questions I get of when I see InDesign users is how the heck do I flow portraits using InDesign? Most publishers have a plugin that goes into InDesign that will help you flow your portraits, but you can do it without that. So this module will go over how to do it without a plugin from your publisher, but I will say if you're using a yearbook publisher, they would probably have a way to do this or help you with it outside of the manual way. So that's an overview of the course content. Let's talk schedule. So throughout the summer, there are going to be two modules dropped every single week, except for the week of July 4th. We're gonna take that week off. And then there's also gonna be a couple of Q and A's where you can get on live with me on Facebook and we can have a conversation about things that you have questions about. We can review homework assignments and we can get together and chat about what you're learning. But also, even though all of this is coming out over the summer, it is an online course that's accessible for you forever. So if you don't have the time to watch modules that particular week, no worries, watch them later. If you don't wanna watch any of them until school starts, no worries, watch them later, that's totally fine. This is just the schedule of when the content will come out for you. So now let's talk about what you'll get when you sign up. The first is going to be obviously the instructional content. So all of the resources are going to be in short little digestible nuggets that you can use to learn all the concepts, but also these are videos that you can play in your classroom when you're teaching your students. So in addition to that, you're also gonna get all the exercise files, so the practice files for you to be able to follow along with me as I'm teaching. You're gonna have homework assignments so that you're gonna be able to practice your new skills. And then lastly, there are going to be tips all along the way about how to teach these concepts to your students. So then I'm really excited about this one. It, one benefit to following along with us live is the community aspect. We're going to have a private Facebook group where you can share your practice assignments, ask questions, and you can learn together along with the other students in the class and I'll be able to answer questions right away versus waiting for the live Q&A. We will have three live Q&As throughout the summer, and so you can hop on those and ask any more in-depth questions you might have, but the Facebook group is really gonna be where you can ask immediate questions and get a quick response. Then, like I said, you can learn any of this at any time. If you don't have time over the summer or you're on vacation or you missed the live Q&A, it's all recorded. It's all gonna be available in the course for you to watch whenever you want, refer back to, play it again, play it in your classroom, whatever. It's yours forever. So there are a couple of things you'll need for the course. First is the time commitment. The course itself is six weeks long with two bonus weeks. So like I said, it's twice a week there's a new module that comes out. The instruction time is going to be about two to three hours a week. It varies depending on the content. And then the practice time or homework is totally up to you, but I would estimate about two or three hours a week as well. Then obviously you will need access to the software, so you can use your school computer if you have one, or you can use your educator discount. You can get it pretty affordably um, on adobe.com, and that will be you know required to be able to do the practice assignments. Then some optional software you might wanna have is Photoshop or Canva, either one. We're going to be creating some layouts that have different types of design elements. So you having Photoshop or Canva will give you some flexibility in creating your own own design elements, but also there are exercise files included in the downloads from the course, so don't worry if you don't have access to those. Then lastly, we need you to have a good attitude. So with anything that you're learning that might be new, it can be frustrating at times. You might reach kind of a plateau where you're like, I thought I was doing well and now it's hard. That's okay. We want you to stick with it because the, once you push through the hard part and you start to really jive, it becomes second nature. But push through and have a good attitude about it. Remember, it's summer, we're chilling, we're having a fun time learning this together. Uh, we don't want it to be stressful. And the more you work out these kinks over the summer, the better it'll be when the school year, when you're teaching your students. 
All right, so lastly, I've been using InDesign for over 20 years. When I first did the math, I was like, 20 years? But it's true, I started using InDesign when I was in eighth grade, back when it was called PageMaker, and then I've never stopped using it. I did graphic design and publications all throughout college, and then I was an advisor, I, and still to this day, I use it every single day. Additionally, I am a master journalism educator, and so this course isn't just the technical aspects of InDesign, it's hyper-focused on what you need as a journalism advisor to create student publications. I'm not necessarily going into every feature that InDesign offers, I'm not going into all the technical specifications, that if you have questions about that, I'm happy to answer them in the Facebook group or on the Q and A's, but this is very focused with intention on creating student publications, specifically school newspapers or magazines and yearbooks. Okay, just a little bit more. At the end of the course, you will receive a completion certificate for all the modules and all the work that you completed. If you are an advisor in Texas, Organized Advisor is TEA certified in offering CPE hours, so those hours are valid through your district professional development requirements. All right, last but not least, the course is going to be $199. However, this is the first time we've ever done it and I really want your feedback, so I wanted to make it as affordable as possible. So for right now, if you purchase before July 31st, so anytime this summer, even if you miss the live stuff in the beginning and you join us halfway through, as long as you purchase by July 31st, it's gonna be $125. The only thing I'll ask is at this price, I really need your feedback. I want this course to be the best ever. Tell me what you like, what you don't like, what worked, what didn't work, what was confusing, what do I need to add, but I wanna make sure that this course is really, really helpful to advisors looking to use InDesign to create their student publications. So if you're looking to enroll in this course this summer, just go to courses.organizedadvisor.com slash InDesign. You'll find all of this information and more, and you can sign up there and get started with us on Thursday. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop a comment below or go to our website and hit the contact button that goes straight to my inbox, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. I'm so excited to get started on Thursday. Bye for now.